You're listening to Preacher Finds a Corpse, an Evan Wycliffe mystery, written by Gerald Everett Jones, narrated by Greg Young. We were 13, an awkward and a perverted age. Brownie the shepherd followed along with us as we undertook our chores at Taggart's Pharmacy. Come on down, Bob yelled, and bring the broom in that dustpan and a handful of those old rags. Evan started down the rickety stairs with the cleaning supplies. Why do I have to do this? Because you drew the short straw, dumbass. When did we draw? Last Saturday? I don't remember. So, you're a dumbass and you're lazy? Better get to work. Having arrived at the bottom... Dutiful Evan awaited his orders. Brownie had descended with Bob and lay curled up on the floor in the middle of the tiny cellar. Tell you what, Bob said, taking the rags. You sweep the floor and I'll dust the shelves. We can't have some stumblebum dropping these rare samples. What about the dog? Evan asked. You nudge her nicely with the broom and she'll move but nicely. The cellar was lit by a single bulb on a pair of twisted wires dangling from a two-by-six floor joist above. The wiring was ancient, maybe dating from the days of Edison himself. The wires were covered with knitted cloth, and where they separated at the joist, they were held in place by porcelain insulators the size of sewing thread spools. It was the middle of summer, and the cool dampness of the cellar was a welcome relief from the heat and humidity. The funky smells weren't bad if you didn't think about dead rodents or rat mess. Evidently, there were no critters to chase, because Brownie was unperturbed. On one bare brick wall were four rows of wooden shelves. Bob was referring to blue-tinted glass jars that held mysterious colored masses bathed in liquid. Evan crept closer, enthralled by the orderly arrangement of carefully preserved organic matter. What's in those things? I don't know for sure, Bob said, adopting a dramatic, secretive tone. And you don't want to find out. I bet it's brains and testicles and such. You know, diseased tissues. My father's a doctor, you know. Wow, that's gross. Evan said. Here, Bob offered, shoving a jar at him. I think this one is cancer from some monkeys. Maybe you want a taste. Brownie sat up. Evan recoiled. Ah, uh, no way. He watched in horror as Bob twisted off the top of the ball mason jar, shoved two fingers into the brine, retrieved a glop of yellow-colored flesh, and gave it to the dog who gulped it down. My God, Bob, what have you done? She could die. Bob looked into the bottle quizzically, fished out another morsel, and popped it into his own mouth. He savored the residual taste and smacked his lips. Definitely not monkey brains. Maybe goat's pancreas? Ew. Then Bob asked Brownie, What do you think, girl? Should we tell him what he's missing? Brownie whimpered. It might have been a giggle. Bob's poker face broke as he was overcome with a fit of hysterical, wheezing laughter. You dumbass. As his laughter subsided and he gained control of himself, he rotated the jar so Evan could read the handwritten label. Pear Preserves You jerk. Evan exclaimed, wanting but not finding a stronger word. What are those doing down here? Bob caught his breath. There was a cellar in my aunt's house when she lived there with my Uncle Jake. But now she's with us in town. We don't have a cellar. So when she does her canning at the end of the summer, she stores the jars down here. Then he added, I'm going to have to tell her pears are your favorite, and you did such a good job sweeping up. That's why I let you open one of her precious jars. 
We're supposed to save them until winter. The other jars were labeled. Spiced apples, green tomatoes, prunes, blackberry jam, rhubarb pie filling. I would have preferred the jam. Gerald Everett Jones is the author of the art history novel Bonfire of the Vanderbilts. The first book in his new mystery series is Creature Finds a Corpse. He's also the host of Get Published Radio. Find help for self-published authors and free podcasts at getpublishedradio.com.